Nervous? A little. Good. I'll tell you something. I like to make people wait. Give them time to think, to reconsider what they have to say. So... You're too young. How old are you? Nineteen. Nineteen. Do you know why you're here? I think so. I see. Look, you're not the only person interested in this job. And you're not the first nor the last person I'll interview this week. Your age, in this case, weighs against you. So, George, tell me about yourself. Where were you born? Uh, I was born in Wisconsin, in a small town called Kenosha. I was raised there until my parents died. I'm sorry you lost your parents at such an early age. Can I ask if your parents are still alive? Fortunately, they are. My father was an inventor. You can imagine, as a kid, having a father building new things every day was like living in a dream. But it was my mother who educated me. What did she do for a living? She gave piano lessons. I mean, she was an artist. Do you play the piano? Did your mother teach you? No. I detest it. Pity. It would have been very useful. My mother forced me to take piano lessons. I think that might be the reason for my aversion. After my parents died, I went to Ireland. You've been to Ireland? I'm half Irish myself. How old were you when you left? Fifteen. I'm good at drawing, so I started to do so. I bought a donkey and... A I donkey? Saw... What a ridiculous idea. And I started to draw people in exchange for a few coins. So how long were you living like this then? Like a tramp? Just a few months. I wanted to enjoy my youth, feel free again and forget about the loss of my parents. A short while after that, I joined this little Irish theatre company and pretended I was this big Broadway star, some kind of gifted child. And I was able to convince the director that the best thing that could ever happen to him was to have me available to act in his play. So, basically, instead of taking piano lessons with your mother, you ran off to Ireland to see the world and to live with a donkey. I'll bear that in mind. Why theatre? It is one of the most agreeable arts. After trying painting and music, I found that theatre gave me the opportunity to work somehow with both of them. In the little Irish theatre company I just told you about, I was able to fit in quite fast. They treated me really well. Did you get to direct anything? The truth is, I did. Just a few months after joining the company, I started to help with direction. And what do you think you know about directing actors? What do you think you learned? I am a great observer. That's not enough. Given your lack of maturity, you'll learn that there are some plays in which observing is not enough at all. I challenge you to try Shakespeare. Sorry for asking, but you direct theatre plays, right? Yes, I do. Of course. And I can assure you, I've directed some of the finest plays ever produced in this town. This is Broadway, kid. It's not easy to succeed here. And what do you do? When the play is finished. When the curtain finally drops. What do you mean? I mean, what do you change from one day to another? Do you talk to your actors? Do you give them new orders? It's not necessary. My actors are professional in what they do. They know their roles and they work according to the text exactly the way I want. I believe that every play can be improved. There is no such thing as the perfect play. In the little Irish theatre I just told you about, I took notes after every performance, and I made changes. 
I discussed those changes with the actors, and together we prepared the improvements for the next show. Go on. Do not treat your actors like professionals, but like, like a big family. It is the teacher at the school that gets the pupil interested in a subject or not. I assure you, you will never find a more willing team member than the one who is encouraged by what he does. Let's say I chose you to direct this theatre. What would you change? How many performances do you do? Six a week. Mondays we rest. Make it two a day, and you will double your profits. That would destroy the actors. Not necessarily. Make changes. Rotate the roles. Pay them a little more. Take them out for dinner once a week. Make them happy with what they do. At that point, some of them would even work for free under certain circumstances, and I have the experience to tell you that. Frankly, I doubt that. Tell me, George, have you tried the movies? The theatre is a collaborative experience. Whereas cinema seems to be just about the work of one single person, the director. Who knows? Maybe someday. As for now, I much prefer doing radio. You worked in radio. Working in radio makes you happy. It's the closest thing to the private, personal satisfaction one gets from singing in the shower. Honestly, I'm surprised to see so much experience in somebody so young. As artists, we know we will either make our masterpieces in our twenties or our seventies, our youth or our maturity. Look for examples, and you'll see this is true. Hmm. Tell me, how many theatre directors do you think there are working in the entire United States? Just here in Broadway, there are thirty-seven theatres. All around our forty-eight states, there must be. Five hundred theaters. Unfortunately, our unemployment rate these days is around ten percent all over the country. So I would imagine that five hundred and fifty candidates could be applying for this job. There are thirty-six theaters in Broadway. The Phoenix closed last week, but the rounding is good. In which country would you like to live? I love Spain. And in which era would you like to have lived? The Renaissance, without a doubt. Thirty years of blood and terror under the Borgias that yet produced artists like Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. History is truly short. You could comfortably fit in this office all of the popes since St. Peter. Are you a communist? I'm not. Although I enjoy teamwork. Where do you see yourself in five years? Do you really think if someone had asked you that five years ago, your answer would have any resemblance to where you are right now? Any plan five years down the line gets affected by health, family, friends. At the end of the day, these are the rules of life.、Mm, you may be right. Look, let's get back to the job interview. We're preparing a new play centered around the crisis of 1929, seen through the eyes of a Wall Street banker.、It、sounds like a good idea to me. And I want you to play the main role. You're kidding me, a 19-year-old broker? No, you'll need makeup, but I want you to play it. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm performing in another play. I know. At the Apollo Theater, I went to see you. Still, I want you for the role, and you will be my collaborator on direction. It's just not possible. Name your price. I find it is just as tasteless to work for posterity as it is to work for money. It's very easy. To get money, if that's really what you want. Look, there are some opportunities that only come along once in a lifetime. You know, this reminds me of another job interview I did two months ago with the head of a newspaper. 
Much to my surprise, the less interest I showed in the job, the more he wanted to hire me. I will let you work on whatever three plays you choose after this next one. You should do Dracula. Although, forgetting everything you've ever seen before. No one has tried to stay completely truthful to the original novel. Presenting a truly terrifying Dracula, throwing away a sack full of newborns crying. Can, can you imagine that on the stage? See? You've already chosen one of your three plays. I want my actors. We have our own actors in this company. I will introduce you to my actors, and I'm sure you will be willing to add them to your team. You will also need to make more modifications to the theatre itself. What do you mean? The acoustics in your theatre are not balanced. As much as the actors shout, you cannot hear them at the rear of the theatre. I didn't know that. What do you suggest? Change the walls and the ceiling. Place wood on the stage to help spread the sound. Place foam panels on the walls to absorb the noise from the audience. And change the covers on the seats using a more, a more absorbent material. That will be expensive. <laughs> you can be sure about that. You also need more stages and more special effects. Add rain and fog. Did you know you can make fog without humidity just by using carbon dioxide in a solid state? And in exchange, that'll be cheaper. Yes, so okay, okay, okay. What do you say? Will you work for me? Come join me at the theatre tonight, and we will decide. We will see Pirandello's Henry IV at a small Italian theatre not far from here. But I don't speak a single word of Italian. You can judge an actor better if you do not understand his language. We will meet at the Roma Theatre tonight at 7pm. I have a feeling this will be an exceptional evening. One, one last thing, George. Uh, what is this G-O-W all over your papers? Those are just my initials. George Orson Welles. But I prefer you to call me Orson. I'll see you in a few hours.